Welcome to Lesson 4, Tutorial 2. In this lesson, we're going to start looking at user inputs. So, I want you to consider this code we've got here at the moment. If I run this, you'll see a little turtle come up and it'll draw. But this turtle is, is it's too big. It's making too much of a shape. It's, it's, it's going off the screen here. So, if I want to change the value of that, I need to be able to be a program and understand how I can come in and actually change this code. But you may be working with people or users who aren't programmers and they don't know what to actually change. So, how do we go about that? How do we make our programs interactive by getting the user input? Well, the simplest way of doing that is through the terminal, down the bottom here, and it's using a thing called input. Okay, so let's see. Let's get away for the users to actually give us the values here, side and length. So, I'm just gonna stop you running. So I need to get change of variable side from being a number into being something that the user actually gives me. So if I come here and say um, input, nope, and then I run that, and in here I can put a little prompt, actually um, input, and just leave it at that. Okay, so if I run this, and I say input here as well, And I run both of those. Let's just go run. And down the bottom here, I should have the capacity to put something in. So if I say five, and I say 100, all right, I've got an error. And why have I got an error? Well, to start off with, input comes in as a string. It says here, error type string cannot be interpreted as an integer. It, this wants us to be an integer. Now, this is all about data types, and we'll learn about data types a little bit on, so later on. So what I just want you to do instead is just to use this int in front of it. And all you need to know is it's just changing words into numbers. Um, so numbers can be used in here. So if I run this again, okay. If I say, if I, uh, I'm gonna stop the running, sorry. And I'm gonna run it and come down here and type five, and then type 100, and there we are. I've got my value there for that. Now the problem is, I don't know, I didn't know if I hadn't run the program, if I hadn't written the program, I wouldn't know that I actually need to put something in here. So in the brackets in here, you can put a little message. It's called a prompt. So um, I can say, how many sides, in question mark, and I'll put a little space, and you'll see why in a second. Um, and then I can say, um, how long are the sides? And then I will close question mark and space and close it off. So I'm going to run it and you now see the message pops up. Now the reason we put the space in is, you see when I click here and the cursor's got a space? Well, you'll find if you don't put a space and the cursor's right up against here and people, people automatically press space. We don't want them to do that because space is not a number. And there we are, we've got that there. So what we've done actually now is I've taken, um, I've got the capacity to get values, which we've got here. I'm getting the input. Um, it's taking the values that the user says, which is five in this case. It's converting it to a number and storing it in the variable sides, which can then be used here. So that's how you do user input.